Over the last three months, you watched us sail from the UK, along the west coast of Europe, to the Canary Islands, where we are currently staying in Las Palmas Marina. We recently had family visit us and explored a lot of the island, but it doesn't take a salty sea dog to figure out where we'll be going to for winter. We're all cleared out of customs and yeah, we can leave whenever we want now. Rather than heading back to mainland Europe, we were about to embark on a 2,000 mile journey across an ocean. And whilst Haley is an offshore cruiser, she needed a few creases ironed out before this passage. You can see we have a a long old list of things to do before we cross an ocean. All the things we need to do before crossing an ocean, stated right there. And there is no time like the present to get cracking. However, before, I want to introduce to you our crew, because as you can see, we've got a lot to do and crossing an ocean is a big task. So we've brought in two friends of friends and we are excited to have them on board for this next uh, section of our journey. This is Hebe. She's usually found zipping around the UK in a race boat, but has always wanted to cross the Atlantic. And meet Matt. Having circumnavigated when he was too small to remember, he is super keen to get back onto the Big Blue. They would be staying with us for the next month or so whilst we sail Tailey to the Caribbean. But more on that later, we have some jobs to do. For those who have joined our story here, hi, we're Becca and Zach. We bought our boat Tailey last March after saving for years. And after six months of figuring it all out in the UK, oh, we ditched the lines and really started the adventure. So come along with us for the highs, so the lows, and absolutely everything in between. Because we're not just doing it. We're bloody doing it. Whilst not 100% needed before a big ocean passage, our dinghy was in need of some love. So before we deflated it and put it away for the crossing, it was time to spruce up the backboard a little bit. So this is what I'm talking about. So it's all just falling off at the moment. So I'm gonna peel the rest of this back and then go from there. <laughs> Give some more beans, it'll be alright. Yeah, lovely. That'll be alright. Perfect. With the dinghy done, it's time for another fun job. What are you doing? I'm hanging up all of our dirty sheets. No, they're clean now. They're clean now. And Marta's over there. Hello, Marta. What are you up to, Marta? I'm filling a water tank with your clothes. <laughs> fun times. <laughs> With more of the mundane tasks out of the way, we get into some of the more exciting passage prep, planning the meals. So we looked at the food we already had on board and then sat down and discussed what everyone eats and wants for food along the way. This then led directly to provisioning, <laughs> also known as the biggest food shop we had ever done. Matt, we got quite a bit. <laughs> We're ready. The boat's going to be heavy. <laughs> so much. We found a taxi driver that would take all our stuff. <laughs> No, that means it's really light actually when you, when you have that reaction. Good job.
So, tell me you're going to cross an ocean without telling me you're going to cross an ocean. <laughs> Look at this! That is impressive. Matt, what are you cooking? Broccoli. Broccoli? <laughs> wow. They're all in there, very satisfyingly. <laughs> Pretty full. Okay, I've got 21. This could work, actually. I think we might have packed enough. So where's pile one? It's oh. here, but I'm basically in it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's fine. That's fine. I'm pile one is starting where my toes are. Right. Again. So this is pile one. Yeah. yeah. Like, for like... Oh. <gasps> Becca! Oh, I knew that was going to happen. Do you want a hand? Yeah. The fruit net just broke. Yeah, yeah, the cable ties did. All the oranges are in the water. Yeah, all the fruits in the water. Yeah, it is. Yeah. All those oranges I just washed just swimming around in marina water. Yeah. Yeah, and a couple of pineapples. And a singular potato. Oh, there was a potato in there. They're not, but they should be. Wait, is that caught it? I don't know how I caught it. Is that caught it? That was so sick. Nice. <laughs> We've almost spilled this net completely. We're going to keep all of our veg the Atlantic in this net and the fridge. Hopefully this doesn't break. She's really heavy. I'm a little bit worried about that, but I think it should be all right. Um, and then we've got a lot of other veg, so we're keeping, in the fridge, so we're keeping squashes, potatoes, onions, and our cabbage in here, because they can all deal with being down here. And then in the fridge down there, we're gonna put our tomatoes, carrots, and a few other little bits, but as you can tell, it's really, really hot today. Super still, there's not a breath of wind out and it's just baking out in the marina, so yeah, I can't wait to go. Oh yeah, it's raining. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I was like, someone's either cleaning their boat or it's raining. With that mammoth task done, it was time to give the engine a mini service. As Matt was keen to learn everything he could about boats, Zach took him under his wing and spent the next few days teaching him everything he knew. There's a little filter inside that you see. You might have to give it a little twist. To this, this little thing? Yeah, here. yeah. And then you seal the stuff in there. Yeah. That stuff is all getting stopped from being in here. So look inside it now, it'll be fine. Yeah. To seal that, we just need to rinse all of that out. So if we ever had the engine overheating for whatever reason, or if we're not getting any water out of the exhaust, this would always be the first thing that I check. If the area on the inside of here isn't completely smooth, it won't have a good seal with the gasket. Right. And so um, if it is a bit bumpy or a tiny bit eroded, I'll just get some very fine, like 600 grit sandpaper. Yeah. And then just move it along the move it along the sandpaper until it's like nice and smooth and it's going to give me a really good seal on this. Right. Knowing how competitive it was to work professionally on boats, it was a pretty cool feeling that we could hopefully give him a leg up and give him some hands-on experience. So that is our an engine anode. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to rinse under water and just see how much life there is left in it. I think I'm going to replace it though now. It would normally look like that. Oh wow. You see how much has been eaten away. Yeah. But that's why we've got them in there, exactly for that reason. Before I get an image of the fuel's turned off. Okay, so this morning, I was changing the fuel filter and somehow managed to shear off one of the bolts on top of the primary uh, fuel filter for the engine. So we're going to see if we can get a replacement for this. It is Sunday in Spain and most of these shops we're going to go to probably won't be open so we might have to try this tomorrow but we're also going to get some chafe protection and some other bits of the boat and see if we can extend our stay for a few more days because the weather looks awful with no wind coming up so hopefully next week we'll have enough to finally go to Cape Verde. The part Zach was talking about was called a banjo bolt which apparently is a niche thing to find even in Las Palmas. So with that on order it was time to head onto the deck to start the next job, reefing lines. 
that one's fine. Yeah. Oh, is it this one? Yeah. Yeah, so you this one yeah. needs to just go, instead of looping around like that, it needs to go through, through. there and then and out. out. Yeah. So, with this, we've been having some issues with how much friction we've been having on the reefing lines. And when we initially rigged up, we probably didn't know much better. And we were putting the lines through there. Looking back at it, it's quite stupid. Mm. Um, I'm actually going to tighten these up in a bit. But it was going through these. But now we've moved this one, so it's going through these uh, zero friction um, cleats or blocks, whatever you call them. I'm just going to move this other one on this side here. So it's going through here instead of through there because obviously it gets a bit caught in there but through there it should be able to just slip through. So. Okay. Lovely, well that works better. Right. This morning, I just extended our stay at the marina because we've still got absolutely rubbish wind coming up. But it means I can get more boat jobs done whilst I'm here. So we're fitting a saltwater tap finally. Just hunting down some hosing and a T joint so I can tee it off one of our current um, pipes we've got coming in the boat from a seacock. So hopefully I can get that sorted today and we can get it all installed and pumping by the end of the day. That was kind of successful. I think I got the right splitter. Um, I don't know if it'll actually fit the seacock we've got in there at the moment. And then I've got a ton of hosing as well, which should be more than enough to install and fit. Gosh, this seacock. Seacock? This. That's not a seacock, that's a pump. Fingers crossed it all works. The plan is I'm going to take off the, I'm obviously going to shut the seacock first, take off the piping here, put the splitter on it, which is there. So I'll have to cut that piping up a little bit and then shove this on there, shove that on there. I might have to heat that down a little bit so it conforms to this size. I'm fairly sure that piping's a little bit bigger. And then we're going to run this piping all the way up to where Becca is right now. <laughs> where this is going to be installed. Mm -hmm. So it should be quite And there's simple. already a hole there. And there's already a hole there which it pretty much fits in, I think, because I think it used to be a salt water tap there. Mm -hmm. Why did they take that out? I think it broke. Because there's actually a hole for a foot pump as well, which is down there, but we're not using a foot pump on it. What? For what? Are we doing this right now? Yes, Sam. <laughs> right now. I think it's my time. There you go, that's all I need. And now you're good to go. <laughs> Two seconds, there you go, I'm done. Alright, you done? <laughs> It's not like I might let loads of water in the boat for a second. God, that's really hot there. You see something scary? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> oh, yes, it fits. Come on. Okay. Bang yeah. plug in. You. Next on the list was replacing the jack lines, which we do before any big sale. To make up for the stuff that we lost. Apparently doing it with a knife is a lot better. You get a lot less fray bits. Fray than with scissors, yeah. Apparently. Whilst Matt and I were doing this, Becca and Hebe were negotiating with foreign pharmacists to give us prescription medication for our offshore first aid kit. We just had a very successful pharmacy visit and now we have such a substantial offshore first aid kit which is really cool thumbs up for the lovely pharmacist in there <laughs> they then spent the afternoon making a spreadsheet of everything we had and the dosage and symptoms pretty organized eh if you want to see a full spreadsheet head over to our patreon where we have it uploaded following this we greased our rudder stock yeah, that was really good. Good job. Thanks. Tested our emergency steering, which is a long tiller which slots onto our steering okay. quadrant. Oh yeah, that's all we need to do. That's all we need out, That's right? really good. That's all right there. We can yeah. still sleep. <laughs> the perfect length. Oh wait, I need to... Um, I'm let you line it up down there. Just yeah. what to do. Went for a dip. Bought a new fuel tank as the 43 year old one was on its last legs. Check the grab bag. Clean the water system and tanks. We're putting white vinegar in all of them to make sure they're nice and clean, disinfect them. We're going to leave it for 24 hours and then come back to it um, tomorrow. We're hoping to leave the day after tomorrow. It's just like a last minute thing getting done before we go. You can hear the water tanks filling up at the moment and we're just using, I don't know where it is. Where 
Where's the skull for that? Is that it? Yeah, we're just using that and we're using a teaspoon of five milliliters every for every gallon. Yeah, we'll leave that to soak for a while because the last thing we want on the crossing is to have any contaminated horrible water. So yeah, it's definitely something we need to do. I'm also gonna do all the big blue jugs that we've got as well. We've got five or six six uh 25 litre jugs as well, so I can remember that. And then 150 litres of normal water just in bottles as well, stashed around the boat just in case it's like a backup of a backup because water is obviously the most limiting factor of this whole crossing. Put some crappy nets up. Do you hate it? It'll do your job. Zach, stop saying that. <laughs> That's not what I'm asking you. You know in that place in Spain where we went to and they had all those like... The um, doilies. Yeah. Are you really thinking of that? A little bit. Is it that bad? I don't think that looks that bad. Stop si silencing me. I haven't done anything. Yeah, but you're just not saying anything, which makes it worse. When it's trimmed, it'll be fine. What's, is it the right way around? What do you mean, is it the right way around? Wait, pull the other one over. Do the other side. So oh, yeah, because you're doing the sections, aren't you? What do you think, Hubie? Oh, my back, it looks amazing. Does it look? I can't even lie to you. Yeah, look, it doesn't look great. Oh god. Well, maybe we better. So I think later. Let's come out with a fresh. Yeah, perspective. Set up our Iridium satellite phone. We've got Predict Wind SIM cards. We've got four of these. We were really lucky getting this one. We got this one secondhand from America for a really good deal. So it took a bit to get it shipped here, but we've got it now. So I'm, it looks like it all works. But yeah, I'm going to set it up, download the app, and activate our SIM cards. And then we're going to have unlimited weather and emailing go across the Atlantic, which is insane. Hey, is it ringing? Yeah, quick, pick it up quickly. Hello? Yeah, it's working. All right, lovely. Is that the sat phone? Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Did a rigging check. Looser. No, 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 it's good. You want it tightened? Yeah. Oh. Good job. Is it tightening? It's now yeah. quarter to six, the day, two days before we leave. And um, we're just doing a rig check at the moment. We've already done mass ones, but we just are doing a deck level rig check whilst the boys are caulking, and that's our laundry. But yeah, good to see, because we just saw a screw, which is come loose, so worth doing. Added chafe protection to our spreaders and shrouds. As you can see I've already done not kind of half, half a job, but I'll show you it in more detail in a little sec. There's yellow paint on the mask. Where's that from? That's weird. Okay, let me just take these more. I'm gonna take this off. Seeker flexed our leaky galley side. Oh, and it was as if we didn't have enough to do, we decided to do this. <laughs> okay. 
So now we have an iridium. We want to be able to have it out here all the time because we don't have the fancy dancy antenna. However, we have no way of charging anything out here and we've been using our phone power banks to charge everything on the trips. But we decided last minute, very last minute, I think it was last night, to actually install a 12 volt supply out here. So yeah, it's about 4 p.m. the day before we're leaving and Zach is drilling holes in the boat. <laughs> I've connected up the negative of the wire and I had to hot spot it off a hot spot it off another negative but and crimp them together but it's fine. Super sweaty work, my hands were slipping around all over the place, but it's done. Now, moment of truth, should I turn it on? Okay, it is on. Yeah? Yeah. Oh the lights come on. The lights come on! There's a light in it. No way. Yeah. <gasps> it's charging! Lovely. Woohoo! Cool. Give me a high five. Happy? Yeah, really happy. Nice. Every time I don't blow something up when I wire it in, it's a good day. <laughs> what a good job. No Just job. done. Yes. But finally, after the busiest and most boat job packed few days ever, I finally headed out on a wild goose chase. I've just managed to finally clear the um, EU customs here in Gran Canaria. <laughs> it's a nightmare finding this place. It's not well signposted. It's down there to the left. I've literally just spent hours walking around. No one really knew where this place was. A lot of the police I talked to were very unhelpful. Um, just not, yeah, not very good. I was, I even translated to Spanish and they were still very unhelpful. But hey, it's all done now. The guy in the visa office there was really, really nice and kind of had a bit of a laugh and a joke, which was a nice change of pace from everyone else I met today. But we're all cleared out of the customs. And yeah, we can leave whenever we want now. I'm gonna walk the I don't know, 35 minute walk back now and have a cup of tea. <laughs> wow, just editing that video was pretty exhausting. Luckily next week we hit the ocean and managed to slow down a bit as we sail south to the Cape Verde Islands. See you then.